Hi, chapter 7, equity market and stock valuation. So, uh, this chapter um, show how to evaluate the stock. So, we focus on valuation model itself. As you know, stock is one of the most important financial securities with bond. And this valuation method is very important. So first of all, we have to learn what's the cash flow for stockholders. So you know, as, you, as we learn in chapter six, the bond valuation, for bond, there are two different types of cash flow. One is the coupon and the other is the par value principle, $1,000, right? So we actually uh, compute the sum of the present value of the future cash flow including the coupon payments and the par value and that's the value of the bond. So now for stock the same notion. For stock valuation we need to compute the present value of all future cash flows that stock may generate. So first of all if you own a stock, so you have the stock you receive the cash two ways. One, firm pays dividend. The company pays the dividend. Number two, if when you sell your shares, then you can get the selling process, selling price. So this is investment horizon, right? One, two, and and year. And you got a dividend, one dividend two, to the dividend and and also you got a selling process, selling price. Okay. So, same thing. The dividend is cash income like coupon in bond and the selling price and difference between selling price and purchase price your capital gain. Now, stock valuation basics. Any finance securities, same thing, you know, right? The price is the present value of the all future cash flow. Get okay, the future cash flow. We use the discount rate, sort of the required rate of returns, right? Appropriate discount rate, same as the bond. We use the de required rate of returns. But the problem here is, you know, so previously we saw that there's a selling price, right? That's, that may be the terminal value for the one shareholder. However, Unlike bonds, the bond has the maturity, right? So maturity is basically, you know, that's the end of the life of the bond. So there is a predetermined, predetermined terminal cash flow, which is the par value. However, the stock does, does not have that terminal value because you, even though you sell the stock to another buyer, another stockholder, still that stockholder has have the has the that shares and then you know trade again. So as long as the company survives, stock never 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 mature. So stock does not have terminal cash flow. So it's kind of the infinite problem. So the they keep paying dividends, right? Dividend, 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 right? And actually forever. So the problem is a little bit different now. You know, bond easy. It's predetermined cash flow first of all, and there's a terminal value. So we simply just take the present value of all those coupon and the par value get the value of the bond. However, the stock take the present value of each cash flow separately and add them up. The those approach does not work since there's no terminal value. So we made some assumption to make it happen actually. This infinite problem, you know, to solve this problem, we need to make some assumptions and then mathematically solve the solve the the, the problems. So let's make some assumption here. There are three assumptions we basically use. First of all, stock pays dividend. Some stock does not pay dividend. So we can use this model when stock pay dividend because the dividend is the cash flows for the future. Okay, so the stock pay the dividend, and then the second assumption is that starting with the next dividend, all dividends grow at a constant rate. You know, it does not have to be positive all the time. It may be positive, negative, zero, 
doesn't matter but it should be constant rate now it's constant rate and it should be forever so indefinitely it grow or it actually drop it doesn't matter it's constant basically just the constant rate forever and the last one is the gross rate in dividends should be less than the required rate of return of the stock because of the characteristic of the model. And we call this model the constant dividend gross model because we use, say, the assumption that the next, from the next dividend, all dividend grow at a constant rate. So in this case, we can solve the problem. So let's look at that. So price of the stock is first year dividend, second year dividend, third year dividend, to infinity, so it's actually infinite, you know, infinite problem, right? And this comes back to the present, okay? But it never stop. So mathematically, we can rewrite this like this: the so sigma t equals to one to infinity dt. So each period dividend divided by one plus r part to t. So first of all, we need to estimate this dividend because dividend is not predetermined money unlike bonds again. And also we need to find this R2, require rate of returns. Have to estimate it. So let's look at the special cases. First case is the constant dividend, which is the zero growth. So it's growth rate equals to zero percent. Okay. Second case, constant dividend growth. So do you have gross rate, you know, and third one super normal gross, which is a little bit differently calculated. Okay, so this is zero gross. If firm does not grow or change the dividend amount, so this infinity problem again. The so dividend is all the time just the dividend, you know, right? This problem is actually called the perpetuity problem, right? If you remember chapter 5, annuity, there are three different types of annuity. And the first one we learned is the perpetuity. Perpetuity, same amount of payment, evenly spaced, and same R, same interest rate, and forever, right? It's called the perpetuity. And if you remember the chapter 5, the present value of the perpetuity is simply the PMT, the payment, divided by interest rate, right? So, for this case, payment is the dividend, right? So the price of the stock, the present value is the price, right? Is the dividend, which is the same payment, divided by required rate of returns. And this is usually a case of, what? Preferred stock. There are two different types of the stocks. One is the preferred share, the other is common shares. So typical share is the common stock. Common stock, you own the, you basically have the ownership. So it means that you participate in the annual meeting and vote to make a decision. You hire a board of directors. I mean, you elect the board of directors actually. However, preferred shareholders does not have, do not have voting right. So free for share does not carry the ownership. Instead, they promise, the firm promise the pre for shareholders to get the fixed amount of dividends. Like here. So pre for shareholders kinds of the, have the guaranteed fixed income. The characteristic of the fixed pre for share is very, very close to the bond because they have promised cash flow. However, unlike bondholders, preferred shareholders still equity holders, so they don't have any right to to file a bankruptcy, even though the firm does not pay fixed amount dividend. If firm does not pay the dividend, the dividend will be accumulated. You know, it's not going to be liability. Sometimes, in that case, preferred shareholders also have voting rights sometimes. Also, the major difference between the preferred stockholders and bondholders is 
So the, so the firm's perspective, so firm pay interest to the bondholders, and that's the before tax money. So you can subtract the interest expense when you compute the taxable income. However, for free first stock dividend is actually the form of dividend is after tax money, which means that you actually the company cannot get any tax deduction for preferred shares. The difference between preferred shares and common shares also the another difference is when firm is in trouble, so firm need to be reliquidated, then preferred shareholders receive proceeds before the common stockholders. So preferred shareholders have seniority. However, they also need to wait until all liability holders receive their proceeds. So really, in the real world, in the real case, mostly in liquidation, preferred shareholders also get nothing. Okay? And preferred stock again is zero gross dividend. So we can use the puppet surety formula simply that's what you remember, right? The P equal to D divided by R to get a fair value. So suppose stock is expected to pay 50 cents dividend every quarter and the required return is 10% with quarterly compounding. What is the price? So now we have 50 cents dividend every quarter, which means that every quarter dividend is 50 cents. And the required return is 10%, now quarterly compounding, so R should be quarterly rate, right? So 10% divided by 4, which is 2.5%, right? So the price will be 50 cents divided by 2.5%. is $20. So the fair price of this stock is $20. When you have this price, now it's time to compare with other, I mean market value of this stock. So if the market value of this stock is greater than this $20, that means overvalued stock, so you need to sell it, sell recommendation. If the market value, the real trading price is below twenty dollars is undervalued stock so buy a recommendation you need to buy it. so that's why we got the fair price now the second case is when gross rate is the constant so we have G now again G doesn't have to be always positive G may be all numbers and all percent but it have to gross rate not the constant amount is constant rate. It means that the next period dividend will be D0 times 1 plus G, two period later, second, so it's a square, and then T period later is basically part of the T. So your expected dividend will be this D1, 2, DT. This is not the minus. D1, 2, TT, DT. Okay? That's, you calculate using the gross rate. So the one key is actually the estimating the gross rate. We are not going to learn it this class, but for advanced class, we also need to actually estimate this gross rate. Too. So when projected, when the dividend just pay $2 and the gross rate is 6%, then it's simply the D1 will be D2 times 1 plus 6%, which is $2.12, right? And then D2 is $2.12 again, plus 1 plus 6%. So about 2.2472 and D3 is a 2.2472 times 1 plus 6 percent again. So it's about 2.3820. Okay. You can compute that. So that's the projected dividend. 
Now it's time to get the present value. So how to compute this present value? Basically, the mathematically, this is the this is the mathematical representation for the present value. The price is, you know, sum of all present value to infinity. Now the problem here is we cannot solve the problem without the calculus skills. So if you use the ca mathematical calculus skill, it's actually collapsed to this simple formula. Since this is not a mathematics class, I'm not going to prove it. But you have to remember these formulas. So this will be, the price of the stock will be D0, the dividend just paid, plus 1 plus G, times R minus G. We call rate of return minus the gross rate. And this numerator is actually just a simply next period dividend. So the price of the stock's next period dividend divided by required rate of return and the gross rate. That's the constant dividend gross model, CDG model. So that's what you have to remember. So for stock valuation, actually, it's some. It's you no. Know, in fact, in in you know in practice, it's harder to estimate. Bond is easier to add the, the get the value since you know we can project bond cash flow pretty easily. You know it actually ha doesn't have to be projected, right? It's actually almost almost predetermined. However, for stock, we need to estimate the cash flow, which is the one of the most difficult things you know in, in valuation. However, for the class proposed, you know what you have to is you actually remember this formula. You don't have to use the cash flow register. You simply use this formula to get the value. So sometimes it's simpler, actually. Let's look at the example. Suppose Big D Incorporate just pay a dividend of 50 cents. So they just pay 50 cents dividend. It is expected to increase its dividend by 2% per year. And if the market require a return 15%, you know, on the asset of the risk, how much should the stock be selling for? So, they just pay dividends, so 50 cents dividend will be D0. It is expected to increase the dividend by 2% per year, so gross rate is 2%. And the market required the return of 15% on the asset, so R equal to 15%. So. P goes to price is D1 divided by R minus G, right? And as you know, the D1 is simply D0 plus 1 plus G divided by R minus G. So, 50 cents times 1 plus gross rate divided by 15% minus 2%. Then the price is $3.92. That's the fair price for this stock. This type of problem, the most important thing is the differentiate between the D1 and D0. It says it's just paid, so that's the D0. So you need to actually calculate D1 by multiplying 1 plus gross rate. However, see the next problem. So for this TB Pirates is expected to pay $2 dividend in one year now. It's a little different, right? If the dividend is expected to grow 5% per year and the required return is 20%, what is the price? So now, this is not D0 because it's $2 dividend in one year, right? So this that's actually next year dividend. So D1 itself is the 2. Now, gross rate is 5% and the required return 20%. The price will be $2 divided by 20% minus 5%. Right? So it's going to be $13.33. So it's simple. So simple problems. The key is you need to know that you need to actually differentiate like D1 and D0.
if you have D0, then you need to actually change it to D1, the next period dividend, by multiplying by 1 plus gross rate. If you have next year dividend, then you don't have to change it. You just leave it. And you use that one as a numerator. So this is the stock price sensitivity to the dividend gross rate. So the gross rate versus the stock price. And if firm grow more than price higher and intuitively it's, it's quite correct right you know you want to pay more money pay more money to buy a stock with the higher growth potentials like 10 percent growth rate versus two percent growth rate i'm going to pay higher money you know more money for the stock with the 10 percent growth rate obviously and if you look at that this case 20% is R, you know, if you have the growth rate higher than 20%, then it, the, the model doesn't work since the de denominator will be negative. There's no negative price, right? And this is also very, very uh, right because mostly if the required return is lower than the growth rate, it usually doesn't happen because, you know, if the growth rate is quite high, that's basically, you know, it, it sometimes mean, means that this stock is like startup company. And starting startup company usually riskier, so the required rate of return may be higher. So mostly, you know, this model pretty much, you know, you can use this model, this model for every company since most firms actually have a higher required rate of return than the growth rate. Now the next Sorry. The next graph is the, now this is typo, this is not gross rate, this is the actually R, required rate of return. So required rate of return versus the stock price. So we require, if you require higher returns, what happens is stock price gets lower. And this is also quite intuitively correct, you know, because think about it. So you require higher return for the stock with risk, high risk, right? If stock is rich girl, what happened? You know, you require a high return. It means that I'm not going to pay high, we'll get more money for that. I'm going to pay less money for the riskier stock, which means that your stock price going down. So it's inverse, inverted related. Example three, Golden Gorge Company expected to pay a dividend for dollar in next period. And dividends are expected to grow 6% per year. The required rate of return is 16%. What is the current price again? So, in this case, D1, right? Because it's expected to pay dividend next period for dollar. Gross rate, 6%. And R, 16%. So, your price will be D1, $4, divided by... R 16% minus gross rate 6%, which is $40. Okay. Next example. Now, what about year four? Now, we talk about the current price all the time, right? Now, four years later, it's also simple. So, four years later, now, the next period dividend will be the fifth year dividend, right? So, D5 divided by R minus three, simply. The key part, we need to get the D5. And we have D1. And from D1, it grow at G% percent, you know, at constant rate. And we have four years to, to grow, right? From year one to five. And divide by R minus G. So it's going to be, I believe, $4 if you don't right? One plus 6% gross rate. Part of the fourth divided by Again, R is 16%, and gross rate 6%, I believe you, can, you will get the $50.50. Yeah. So, you can get the price anytime, and you see the price increasing, and it's also quite right because, you know, the firm's growing, so stock price should increase, right? Now, this is the condition for the constant growth dividend growth model. First of all, dividend expected to grow at G forever, which is the condition of the, the constant growth model, right? And the next one, now stock price also expected to grow G forever. So, it means that your price changes, this one. So, the capital gain, the price 
changes divided by the purchase price will be always gross rate. That's another condition. Expected dividend yield is always constant. It means that D1 e divided by P0 equals to D2 divided by P1 all the time. Since it grow at G at the same time, right? So the dividend yield return will be the same. Expected capital gain yield is which is the price difference, right? Price changes again because it grows at G. It's also constant and it goes to gross rate. Now expected total return R should be greater than G, which is another condition for the CDG model. And then our expected return has two components. Now we have two income, right? One is the dividend, the other is capital gain. So your yield total return should be expected the dividend yield plus expected the gross rate, which is the capital gain yield. This is the capital gain yield. And we're gonna see this formula actually uh, later on, actually, in our later slide. Now the next item is the non-constant growth. This is a little bit complicated, so you need to uh, carefully uh, practice one. Uh, I'm going to also post number of problems, you know, with solutions or model already, so you can also practice for those problems. Too, okay. So let's look at it. Suppose a firm is now expected to increase dividend by 20% in one year and 15% in two years. After that, dividend will increase at a rate of 5% per year indefinitely. So it's not going to be constant growth model, right? Because it's not constantly growing. First year 20%, second year 15%, and then from second year, now it starts to grow 5% forever. So there's some part that we can use the ZDG model, but not everything. If the last dividend was $1 and the required return is 20%, what is the price of the stock? Now remember, now again, we have to find the present value of the all future expected dividends, right? So let's see that. Now, let's compute the dividend until the growth level of to the constant rate, like, right? So the first dividend with the just pay dividend D0, right? Plus 1 plus 20%. It means that $1 dividend paid and 20% increase, so $1.20 will be first year dividend. Now second year dividend is increased by 15%, so it's going to be 1.2 times 1 plus 15%. Right? Which is 1.38. Now D3 is now level off, right? D2 plus 1 plus 5 percent. So one point three eight times 1 plus 5 percent, which is 1.449. So the first step we have to do is, the, let's look at the, see this timeline here, right? First dividend one dollar, second dividend dollar twenty, third dividend dollar thirty eight. I mean, D one, D two, D three, right? So let's assume that we sell this share at the time that start to behave like CDG model, constant growth rate. So. It start from this year two, right? So let's sell, let's sell this share in year two. It means that we can get the price as of year two using the this reasons. From this point, your dividend di grow at a constant rate forever, right? So the D3 next year dividend divided by R minus G will be the price as of year two, which is the nine dollars and sixty six cents. So. You can sell this share for $9.66. Now, let's assume that we sell this one here, right? It means that now our cash flow is this $1.20, right? And $1.38 and $9.66. 
so the price will be one dollar and twenty cents first dividends divide by one plus r twenty percent back to the present right plus one plus three eight dollars second year dividends to come back to the present so 1.2 square and then finally if you sell it you receive nine dollars and sixty six cents divided by one plus again twenty percent square because at the same timing right this is the price eight dollars and sixty seven cents will be the price today this is a little bit complicated because first of all first step you need to have you need to find this timing first timing that start to behave like or settle down the growth rates behave like growth the dividend growth model the constant dividend growth model which means that start to constantly grow forever this year too and then you assume assume that you sell this share at that time find the price using the next year dividend Then you discount back to the, all the left dividend with selling proceeds, selling price. Get the present value. That's the price of the stock. It's non-constant growth model. It's special non-constant growth model case, and this is quite important. Now, if you look at another problem, it's up a little bit differently. So I can explain that one again. So there's another way to solve it. Now, when when, it, when dividends start to grow forever, basically here, right? Okay. So dividend two. Now the the condition for the constant dividend growth model is from the next dividend. So next dividend, it start to grow at a constant rate, right? So in fact. We can actually use this one as a next dividend. And if this dividend two is the next dividend, then we can get the price one instead of price two, right? So price one equals to 1.38, again, divided by R, 20% minus 5%, which is $9.20, 9.2. So instead of picking this timing, you know, treat this timing as a next dividend and get a price previous year and sell the share that time. Means that now we have dollar twenty cents divided by again back to the present one plus twenty percent plus now we sell it by nine dollars and twenty cents again same timing right so you're gonna have exact same answer actually it's up to you so one way you can use this slide way pick the timing that start to behave like CDG model it means that start to grow at a constant rate forever and then find the price that time using next year dividend this come back to the present all the left dividends remaining dividend and the selling pr price you got a you got a price of as of today next one instead of using the next year dividend let's make this dividend as a next dividend then you can actually get a price previous year and assuming that you sell it in the previous year again the remain dividend discount back to the present you need to have the same answer so these kinds of problems you know you so if you look at the solution there are two ways to solve now some problem some some solutions solve the first way some solutions solve the second way both are right actually so you know it's up to you again if you are comfortable with the first one then you use the first one if you're comfortable with the second one you use second one and the answer should be the consistent correct and the same again this problem is one of the most complicated problems for this class so I really recommend you to practice a lot you know especially I provide you so along with the Simon problems I provide you the five different problems regarding the CDG and the non-constant dividend growth model like this and then 
you know, we test very detailed solution. You can check with that and practice it. Again, there are a number of, at the end of chapter, the end of chapter problems, practice it, you know. So, the stock valuation problems, everything very simple except this problem. No? As, you know, if you practice a lot, then this is not going to be the problem. Yeah. If you do not practice, then it, it may be problematic when you take the quiz. So, I really recommend you to practice this problem, you know, a lot. And more than the, just the silent problems, you know. The, the practice problem I provide, plus more at the end of chapter problems. Okay. Again, you know, let's solve some simple problem again, you know. What is the value of the stock that is expected to pay constant dividend $2 per year if the required rate return is 15%? Now, this is uh, what the problem is that. That's constant dividend, right? So actually, you know, so that's the preferred stock. So we can actually use this one, right? And this is actually work from this model too, right? The D1 divided by R minus G. Since this case G equal to zero, so this is zero, this is simply the dividend, right? So two dollars divided by fifteen percent, that's the price. Thirteen dollars and thirty-three cents. Now, what if the company starts increasing dividend by three percent per year beginning with the next dividend recurring returns three percent? Now G equal to three percent, then simply plus. Now, $2 dividend just pay 1 plus 3%, that's the next year dividend, right? And then plus divide by 15% minus 3%. So, it will be $17.17. So again, this kind of problem simple. Again, the practice problem you have to do is the non-constant dividend gross model problem. And if you don't understand, then just let me know, you know, if in class, after class, email, and the, the office or anything. All right. Now, let's find R instead. No. So from this formula, so P0 equals to D1 divided by R minus G. Let's rearrange it. So this is going to be P0 times R minus G equals to D0, D1, right? Then R minus G equals to P0 divided by I'm sorry. It's actually it's going to be D1 divided by P0, right? And then in this case all equals to D1 divided by P0 plus G, right? This one. And in fact, you know, you if you remember the condition previous slide. This is dividend yield, right? So dividend divided by the our purchase price, that's the dividend yield. So that's the first component for the returns. Second component returns the gross rate, which is the same as actually price difference, right? This one. This is all the time just the growth at G, right? So this is actually capital gain yield. So again, we have two returns, this different return, return from dividend, return from capital gain. And this model confirms that. So see. A firm stock is selling for ten dollars and fifty cents. They just pay one dollar dividends, and dividends are expected to grow five percent per year. Whereas R, now so R equals to again D one divided by P zero plus G, right? Now we don't have D one because this is D zero, right? It's just paid. So this is actually D zero times one plus G, which is D zero D one divided by P zero plus G. So it's going to be just pay dividend one dollar plus one plus five percent increase divided by the price plus five percent, right? You're gonna have fifteen percent. So that's the required rate of return. So again, there are two components, one is from dividend, the other is capital gain. Okay, so that's that's the solution. So now we solve that. So 10% dividend yield, 5% capital gain yield for this problem. Okay. 
You observe the stock price $18.75, you expect the dividend growth rate 5% and the most recent dividend was $1.50. Again, the most recent dividend is D0. That's the key. So the R equals to again D1 divided by P0 plus G. D1 is can be calculated by the D0 times 1 plus growth rate. So 1 plus 5% divided by the price. $18.75 plus 5% so your dividend yield is actually 8.4% and capital gain yield is 5% so total yield is 13.4% so that's R So this chapter is not very long chapter. This is short chapters. We only only uh, learn how to value weight the stock. And one, you remember dividend growth model, like the constant dividend growth model. The formula is important. Okay. Number two, you remember the conditional. I mean the the characteristics. It means that there are two different types of the yield. One is dividend yield, the other is capital gain yield. And from this model, capital gain yield always just a growth rate. So it means that this model assumes that the company actually pay dividend forever. And this dividend grow at G, which is the growth rate of the firm. Because the stock price, if you we believe that the stock price is reflection of the future value to all the future values right so basically present value of the future cash flows then if I'm grow at G then the stock price also should increase by G percent right so from if from grow, uh, increase the dividend by G then this also assumes that our oh, firm firm value increased by G from Gross rate equals to gross rate of the dividend. That's the big assumption of this model. Number three, when you compute, when you compute the present I mean, price of the stock with the sort of the non-constant gross rate, which includes some uh, the, the the periods that can be used for the constant dividend model, then you can use the non-constant gross model uh, solutions that we did before, right? The two ways. Either way is fine. I really strongly recommend you practice as many pro as many problems as possible for non-constant growth model. So this is end of the chapter seven.